Um, I want to say thanks for having me here at Catalyst Week. Um, I'm still a little unsure what it's all about, but I'm definitely having amazing conversations, and that's been worth it. Um, before I let you know what this talk is all about, I want to ask you two things. Um, I want you to start replacing the word innovation with the word permission. I think we're using them in the wrong way, and I think we're kind of putting the horse before the cart, and we really need to start thinking about places of permission versus places of innovation. Innovation comes at the end. Um, the next thing I want you to do is take that postcard um, that you should have on your seat. There should be a pen, and I want you to write your name, and I want you to write um, an address that you can receive mail at. That can be your business address, that can be your home address. I'm not going to write these down. These will not be put in a spreadsheet. They're one time only, and it's just so you can receive the gift a few weeks later. So a little bit about me. So I am an artist. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk about my art side, my art hat tonight. Um, I have been doing large-scale collaborative work at Burning Man for, it's hard to believe it, but for the last 15 years. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been working with two groups. Um, the Flaming Lotus Girls um, is where I kind of grew up as an artist and began to understand the power of collaborative work and the power of interactive work. Um, and then in 2010, um, co-founders, um, Rebecca Anders, Peter Kimmelman, and Katie McGee, we all took the risk to say that what we did out there on the desert was actually worth um, developing a nonprofit platform around. And a lot of people told us no, <laughs> but I think maybe that, um, that actually gave us um, energy to keep going and not take no for an answer. Um, so we then founded the Flux Foundation, and we have created 10 projects now, 10 um, collaborative um, projects from small scale. We've kind of stopped going large scale every time, um, but we are size queens. Um, <laughs> and only, I, I, I kind of am proud of this, although I am a Burning Man artist and I really respect what I've been taught out there. Only two of those projects have been done out on the playa, so eight of those have been out in the public. Um, and so a little bit about Flux Foundation. Our mission is to engage people in designing and building public art and to do that as a catalyst for education, learning, leadership, collaboration, and empowerment. Um, we like to say that we are a new model. I don't know if we're the only model, but we like to say that we are, amongst our peers, we are a new model for exploring art through a really highly collaborative pro process. Collaboration is a huge word we use, and we really respect that word, um, and we really try to earn that word in our art. So when we make a piece of art, it's not ever under my name. Like, the byline doesn't say, by Jessica. Um, the byline says, by Flex Foundation. And that's really important to us, that it's not just one individual that gets credit for it, but that we all get credit for it, and we all have ownership of it. So some of the things that, the core values that we have in Flux Foundation. Every step in the art making process is actually also an opportunity for learning and growth. So when we are making a new piece, but we don't know, maybe we don't know so much about um, programming LEDs in this certain sequence. Well, it doesn't mean that we can't do it, it just means we have to learn. And so maybe we collaborate with somebody, we find a new um, collaborative partnership, maybe we have a couple of people on the team that just dive in and learn it and teach it to everybody else. Um, all individuals who contribute, whether it is the person leading the metal team, whether it is the person filling out all the paperwork, whether, whether it's the person who comes in and gives food to the crew after we've been there all night long, everybody is fundamental to the process of making the piece. And we really try to call that out. When we have meetings, we have team leaders, and we really try to um, give props to everybody. Even the small pieces that 
you know, people don't think are important. They really are. And I think this is really important. Everybody can be an artist. And um, I know I wasn't told this, but I think a lot of us have been told this, that, you know, oh, maybe, maybe you should try something other than painting. You know, maybe, maybe you should be a scientist or a mathematician, which is great, I'm not saying, but that you don't have the right to have an outlet as an artist. And I think we all need that, and we all need to understand and appreciate that right. Um, you don't have to know how to do it. Um, if somebody comes into our shop and has never touched a welder, it doesn't mean that they can't learn. Um, really, learning is the easy process. Opening up and saying, yes, I want to learn, that's the harder process. Um, each project we also use as a vehicle to learn new skills and also teach people new ways to approach art and um, learn about the art world as a whole and where they, where they kind of lie in the lineage of it. So we just, we don't create public art, we create public artists. And we really, this is really important to us that yeah. it's, it's about public art not only being out in our cities, but also that it's created by us. So what do you need to create these? It's actually really simple. Well, I say that, but... So you need ideas, place, and people. So for instance, you need nudity, well, thousands of people, and the Sydney Opera House. Um, if you don't know this artist, this is Spencer Tunick. And this is a way that a large amount of people collaborated together to create this canvas that kind of, you, you don't stop looking at the human body, but you look at the form and the pattern, and it becomes, it transcends itself. So what does it look like? What is this platform of permission that I talk about? What does it look like in our shop um, as we're making this work? These are some of the top words, and this list can go on, but this is, these are some of the key um, elements. Gratitude. Um, that you're supporting each other. That our shop is about access to tools, access to people, access to ideas. Um, that you're vulnerable. Even as a leader, in, you know, if you have a leadership role, if you have, you know, if you're just coming to the shop, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's a safe space. Um, experimentation. It's all about experimentation and play. Um, it's an important place to listen. And scaffolding. Scaffolding is a word I like to explain just a little bit, that when we do our collaborative structure, it's not a free-for-all. It's not just like, go and create. <laughs> it's actually, we, we put loose sort of gentle barriers, and we create scaffolding for areas of entry at multiple points, but there is kind of a little structure, and it actually helps people feel safer. And then once people feel safe, you can actually kind of help them and guide them to like push beyond that as well. Um, engagement, horizontal leadership, so it's not about I'm here, you're here, it's about I'm here and you're here, and sometimes we're here and here, but that we really try that everybody is an equal partner. Patience, a great deal of patience. Um, empathy, I can understand where you're at and maybe you need me to step back a little bit or give you a little space, um, or maybe you need to, me to push you a little bit. Um, research, we do a lot of research and we love people to bring ideas in. Um, we also need people who are experts in certain areas. Um, and also horizontal le learning. I can teach you and you can teach me. So I'm not always the person dictating or saying. Um, trust and I think most importantly, fun. So this is actually from our project Tweet House that we do with um, third graders in Oakland. And they create collaborative birdhouses, and we worked with Oakland Parks and Rec to distribute them in public parks. Okay, so a little bit like, how do we do this? How do we create this platform of permission? Um, there's a little bit more of our tweet house. First thing, you say yes. I think a lot of us have grown up in a culture where we hear no. I don't think you can do that. Oh, you don't have that degree? Mm, I don't know if you can do this. No, um, 
mm, this might not be the place for you. And so what we really try to say is, yes. Oh, you want to come build art with us? Yes. You want to um, come in and learn a tool you've never played with before? Yes, we'll teach you. Um, you know, just embrace that. This is a flash mob happening in, I, I forget the location. <laughs> but just like, yes, come and join this. Um, mistakes are information. They are not shameful. They are not, you know, you did something wrong and now you're going to get punished for it. No, they're just information. Like, this is actually on site. We are learning that one of the elements that we created doesn't fit. <laughs> and this is us engaging in some conversation, like, how are we going to fix it? It's not that the thing's going to fall apart, but we just need to get creative. Um, you don't need to know how. You just need enthusiasm to learn. That's really important is like, I, I don't care if you don't know how to do it. If you step in and say, I want to learn, then you're ready to learn. OK, next step. Um, so I want you to take those postcards, and I want you to pass it to somebody you don't know. OK, so the next step is on the open side, on the message side of the postcard, what I want you to write is something that you can teach others. And I, I, want, I want everybody to know in this room you have the capacity, you have the possibility of teaching a group of people something, whether it's small, whether it's like, I can teach you how to cook um, homemade pasta. Or whether I can teach you how to weld. You know, it can, it can be anything. But just write something you can teach others. And once you're done with that, just, you know, kind of place it on your seat or underneath the seat. And a couple weeks from now, you will get a surprise in the mail. Um, and this is really important because every teacher is a student and every student is a teacher. That learning really is horizontal and that we don't box ourselves into our roles. You can see this kind of in action as Chris, who's standing up in the white shirt, is a contractor. Audrey's, um, she's an architect, and they're actually working through a problem together. And actually, Chris, in the end, learned about a new material he didn't know about. OK. Um, I want you to put on the, the message part something you can teach others. The one that you um, traded with somebody. But not on our own name. Not on your own name. So you want somebody else's name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes are information. Mistakes are information. It's okay. Um, so in our shop, we really work through a continual state of learning and research through doing. So we are active in our shop, and we learn through the process of Playing with wood, paint, playing with materials, playing with metal. Um, this is something that happens in our shop as well as I think happens inside of our installations. We use the, the idea of spectacle and awe to disable social norms to actually create that idea of pl um, permission. So when you come in our shop, this is the center of um, when we were, we were um, given the temple project um, at Burning Man, and this was the, the sort of space that we really wanted to kind of create that moment of reverence and pause. And that's where our social norms sort of get disabled when we have that moment of pause. We actually can reach out to other people. And we do that in our shop by just saying yes. Oh, you've never welded before? Well, come, I'm going to teach you how to plasma cut right now in 10 minutes. You know, and most people, that, that doesn't happen. Um, language is important. The, what, the type of language that we use in our shop, we really try to use inclusive language, language that's not about I'm this and you're this, but really about we and you and I working together. Um, this is the Rebar's um, Parklet project. Um, don't covet your ideas. Information is to be shared. This is. Um, our um, My First Poofer class. So this is us teaching our community how to make um, fire 
um, fire toys. I don't want to say toy, but fire effects. Um, and yeah, poofers. And we don't we don't just keep this information close to you know. We don't keep it close. We actually love to share and say, you know what? Somebody taught us this, and we're going to keep teaching it and sharing it with you. Um, I talked about this earlier. This is really important. Everybody's contribution is fundamental to the whole. So every single person that puts a hand on something, whether it's from a distance through fundraising, everybody is part of it. This is something that's really important to us the process of making our art and being in our shop and the process of creation is almost more important to us than the end project. And it doesn't mean the project suffers. I think that actually the project is better because we are all like the process is so important. And when that is important, the whole thing is better. This is us um, doing some of the prototypes for the Tweet House. And I think we can do that, pro that process is important because everybody who's working on it is working towards a common goal. And throughout this process, collaboration is really key. This is how we can get it done. This is how we can do these large scale pieces. And real quick, and I know I'm running out of time, um, but if you are in a leadership role, how do you take on this type of work? Um, we really see ourselves who are in kind of the person driving the project. We, s we call ourselves vision holders, that we're really about holding on to the vision and kind of knowing where we're starting from and where we're going to, but we're not dictating where people are going in the process. We're letting people choose the roles themselves. And you're really there to help people succeed. Um, you're the one who can see how to get from here to this model to here. So the end product. So you're the vision holder. You're the one that's kind of containing that information. So how do you do that? You really, as the vision holder, you break it down into smaller pieces. You make it sort of not as overwhelming. So these are, these are some examples of how we did it for the temple. So how do you take plywood, break it into parts, and make it look more like geology? Well, you break it down into big chunks. Those are kind of the big striations. You break it down into these <coughs> things that we call thatches and um, other little bits and parts, the fillers. And then you show people how to actually put it on. So these are guidelines. We make big posters. We walk people through it. You know, this is the process of layering the side of the temple. You know, and we walk through it. And then you practice. So we practice in 3D modeling. And then we actually had classes where we clad that thing seven or eight times. So in the end, the wonderful thing that you get all together is everybody is an artist who built this. But I think the wonderful thing that we didn't even know is more importantly, this is what you build. So that's a little bit about the idea of platforms of permission. Thank you. <laughs>